my stepdaughter absolutely hates me. And the reason is, she says that I separated her mom and dad from each other. But what my stepdaughter doesn't know is that her biological father is an absolute toxic piece of garbage who laid his hands on her mom. And you know what? She pushed me to the edge and I have to reveal to her exactly who her biological father is. I'm 44 and I've married my wife Sandra for over 10 years. And recently I've learned that my stepdaughter Jessie has been trying to get Sandra and me to get a divorce. I started to be suspicious of Jessie when she instigated arguments between my wife and me. And so one day, I decided to go through her room to see if she was possibly doing drugs or something along those lines. However, instead of finding the usual, well, pot or pills, I was expecting I stumbled upon some twisted plots that she's written out in letters to her biological father. Jesse was not supposed to be in contact with her father, Devin, because of his toxic history, yet she was clearly in communication with him on a regular basis. In these letters, she was telling her father that I was cruel to her and that I was a drug addict. I was shocked when I started reading them. I was hurt because I'd been in Jesse's life for 10 years, and I thought we had a decent relationship. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> the more I read, the more I realized how much she truly hated me. She went on and on about how I would not let her sit at the dining room table to eat dinner, and that I never saved her any food because I would eat all of it. Her father would buy into every word she wrote him to, and he was furious by the allegations she was making against me. And that's when I kept reading and discovered this plot to get Sandra and me divorced so he could swoop in and steal Sandra back. But what Jesse doesn't know is how messed up her father truly is. He used to beat Sandra back when they were together, and he even spent time in prison for what he did to her. But Jesse doesn't know anything about this information. Sandra wants to keep her in the dark because she doesn't want to hurt her. But now that I know she's plotting my divorce, I need to tell Sandra to talk to Jesse. Well, there had a couple of dozen letters here to look through, and of course, I read every single one of them. I did not quite understand why she had the letters that she sent her father and his responding letters until I realized she had made copies of them. She sent to her father to be able to remember exactly what she had told him I was doing to her. Because if she could not remember what she said, he could catch her in a lie. Pretty smart, I have to admit. But when I kept reading through the letters, one stood out, unlike the others. She wrote that I would lock her in her room without food or water and would not let her go to the bathroom. I could not believe what I was reading. I'm surprised her father has not just shown up and knocked my teeth out by now. But then again, he was never father of the year either. But I can't just sit around and let Jessie continue to spew these lies about me to her father and expect everything to be okay. That's when I noticed she left her phone at home today. So, I grabbed it off her dresser and started going through it. I was not expecting to be able to find much because typically teenagers delete what they don't want to be found, but right there, there it was. Text messages to her father. Yep. I don't know how she got his number because he did not give it to her when he responded to her letters. The text messages were full of Jesse telling her dad how happy she would be when he and her mom reunited, and how she'll finally be free from abuse. I've never even raised my voice at Jesse, let alone locked her in her room. She just says anything and everything to paint me as the bad guy. And she's giving her father false hope that he'll be able to win Sandra back. It's not going to happen, not if I can help it. After I finished reading the text messages, she also told her dad more lies about me. I started to get paranoid, like I was missing something important here. So, I started tearing her room apart, looking for more stuff to see if there's anything I did not find, and to my horror, when I opened her notebook, she had laid out an entire plan to tear Sandra and me apart. There were plots written out to cause Sandra and me to argue. She wrote out things to tell her mom that would cause her to get angry with me. All those arguments we've been having have been due to what Jesse had written in these notebooks. 
one plot until Jessie telling her mom that she saw me with a woman out front. I'd gotten out of a car that a female was driving one day. I looked back at the argument that we had about this and Sandra had snapped at me for getting a ride from some woman one day and I admittedly told her that I never got a ride from anyone. I even had to tell her that I took my own car that morning to work. So how on earth did I end up getting dropped off by someone? But she told me she never once looked out front that day, so she did not know for sure if I've driven myself or not. It was absolute madness. Now, I know that Jesse was one who made the argument take place. And not only that, but our argument about when Sandra accused me of stealing Jesse's money from her piggy bank. I never did that either. But it was clearly written down in Jesse's notebook. There were pages and pages of these plots against me to make Sandra and I argue. She wrote at the top of each page, and I quote, Make Mom and Matt get a divorce. There's no way she can deny it with that written on the pages, and I decided that I would confront Jesse when she got home, and that's exactly what I did. I waited for Sandra to leave the house and go grocery shopping. And then I walked upstairs to Jessie's room and stood in the doorway with my arms crossed. Jessie looked up from her phone and said, What do you want? I paused for a second and then came into her room and sat down at her computer. And I turned towards her and said, You can stop trying to get your mom and me to get a divorce. I know all about your plans to cause us to argue so much that we finally will leave each other. Wow. She blinked in surprise and started to stand up and walk out of the room. Oh yeah, I found everything. The letters to your biological father, the text messages, and the notebooks. What you don't realize is that I love your mom, and I love you too. And I'm really hurt that you would say such lies about me to your father. Well, she stopped in the doorway and turned around and said, <laughs> It doesn't matter. For all he knows, I was not lying. <laughs> And my mom will take my side anyways. Well, I had to laugh a bit at that and told her that she would not believe her because I took all of her notebooks and letters and I would be showing them to her mom tonight. That's when her face turned the color of a beet. Red. And she began to stutter when she tried to talk. I held up my hand and she stopped talking and I told her that she would have to spend her time doing something else because her plans end tonight. And with that, I got up and walked out of the room. I could clearly hear her throw some things against the wall, but I ignored it. I would not start yelling at her now that I would just give her fuel to add to the fire. And then I waited for Sandra to get home from the grocery store so I could reveal to her what her daughter had been up to the last year or so. When Sandra got home, I showed her everything Jesse had sent to her father, including the text messages, and let me tell ya, Sandra... She was shocked. I told her that I tried to tell her that I was not lying to her about the woman or the piggy bank and all the other things Jesse had been lying to her about. Well, she apologized and forgave, but it was not her fault. How could she have known it was all an evil plan? Sandra told me we needed to sit Jesse down and reveal the secrets we've been keeping from her, and I agreed with her on that, so we decided that we would do that after dinner. Jessie did not come out of her room the entire day after I talked to her. She did not even come out to say hi to her mom when she got home from the grocery store, but I knew she's probably worried about what her mom would think or say after I told her everything. Sandra took everything pretty calmly, I'll be honest with you, but I know she's probably just as worried as I am because Jessie has been in contact with her father, and after everything he put Sandra through, I know that's the last thing she wants. Once dinner was made, Sandra called Jessie to come downstairs and eat, but she yelled down the stairs and told her mom that she didn't feel good and did not want to eat. I looked at Sandra and she looked back at me and then she told Jessie that she needs to come downstairs anyways, but Jessie refused. So Sandra and I walked up to her room and we walked up and sat on her bed while Jessie sat in her computer chair. Sandra told her that she knew about all the letters, the text messages, the notebook entries. She also made a note to tell her that she was not mad at her particularly, but she was very disappointed. 
She told Jesse that she was in love with me, not her father, and that her father was not who she thought he was. Jesse laughed at her mom and told her she did know who her father was and that he was great. Sandra looked down at her hands and sighed. I knew she had a difficulty hearing from this from her daughter, but I didn't really know what to do to comfort her. When Sandra and I went to Jesse's room to talk to her about her plotting against me, I was just very worried about how Jesse would take the news about her dad. Sandra ended up telling Jesse that she would not cause her and me to get a divorce. She also told her that her father, well, he's a bad man. A very bad man. But Jesse would not believe her when she tried to explain what he has done to her all those years ago. Jesse told Sandra that she did not care what her father had done that she wanted Sandra and him to be together. She also said, and I quote, I want to be with my dad. At this point, Sandra stopped her before she could say another word. Sandra told her she had some things to show her before the conversation went any further. Sandra brought a folder with her that I knew contained the gruesome pictures of her battered face and body, all done by the hands of Jesse's father. Sandra looked at Jesse and said these exact words. In this folder is everything I've been keeping from you about your dad. Jessie looked at the folder in her hands and tried to reach out to grab it, but Sandra pulled it back and said, You're not going to like what you see in here, my baby. Jessie rolled her eyes and told her she'd be fine, just give it to her. Sandra handed the folder to Jessie, and I watched as she opened it up, and the first thing she could do was, well, see the picture of her mom. They were awful pictures. Her face was swollen black and blue, her jaw crushed, her nose pushed to the other side. Jessie slammed the folder shut and threw it down to the floor. Sandra picked it up and Jessie began to cry. And Sandra told her that it's okay. Jessie hesitantly looked and she realized that it was her mom in the pictures, which is understandable because she was almost unrecognizable in them. He had beaten her so badly that she needed reconstructive surgery twice. But Jesse never knew a thing about it till now. Yet, she still had no feelings or idea that her father was the cause of her mother's pain and suffering. Update number one. Sorry guys, I was exhausted after sitting down and watching Sandra explain to Jesse just how her father had treated Sandra when we were together. That night was pretty difficult for all of us. Sandra did not even go to show Jesse the four police reports that she saved from when her ex-husband almost killed her more than once. Jesse had seen quite a bit by looking at those pictures of Sandra, and she thought it'd be too much for her to read them at that point in time. So, we waited about two days before we decided to all sit down again, and this time at the dining room table, and Sandra laid out the police reports, and she had Jessie read each one, and the more she read, the more her face turned red. The tears ran down both cheeks. She's been kept in the dark for her entire life, and now she knows the truth. However, Sandra told Jessie that she was almost killed by her ex-husband and did not want her talking to him anymore. But the bad thing is that after that night, Jessie continued to talk to her dad without us knowing about it. She tried to, well, instigating arguments between Sandra and me. And somehow she convinced her father I was abusing her. I didn't know what to do anymore. Sandra told me she would take care of it, but she never really did anything about it. I was so worried that her father would show up and confront me. That's the last thing I need. And it happened. Sandra caught Jesse sneaking out one night, and Sandra followed her and found out that Jesse had gone to meet with her dad. Sandra followed her back home, and when Jesse got into the door, Sandra came in right behind her and she snapped at Jesse. Absolutely snapped. She told her that she was not to see her father ever again. She also asked Jesse if nothing she had told her mattered to her. Sandra's yelling had woken me up and I went downstairs to see what the heck was going on and found them both arguing with one another. I asked them what they were talking about and arguing. Sandra filled me in on the news and yes, I was shocked. After everything, Sandra told her she was still trying to be with her dad. It just does not make sense. Why would she do this to us? 
update number two. Two weeks have passed and there was not any problem within that time. However, this morning whenever Sandra and I got up, I walked past Jessie's room and noticed, well, she's not there. So I started looking for her throughout the house, but she's nowhere to be found. We ended up calling all her friends that we know that she might be with, but none had seen her. I told Sandra that she's probably with her dad and Sandra knew I was right. We ended up calling the police and reporting Jesse missing and Sandra got Jesse's father's number from his mom and she gave him a call. She asked him if he was with Jesse and he said he wasn't. But when Sandra told him that we had filed a missing persons report for Jesse, he ends up coming clean and telling Sandra that she's with him. Sandra told him to bring her back home but he was reluctant so... He started snapping at her about me and all the things that Jesse had told him. And Sandra had to explain to him that she was making all of it up. But he just would not believe her. He told Sandra that he was not going to bring her back home and that she was going to live with him from now on. That's when Sandra began to panic and so did I. How could we possibly find her if she was with him? We don't know where he lives, and then I realized that I could call his mom and ask her. So, I grabbed my phone and went into a different room, called his mom, and explained the situation to her. She was very helpful and concerned for her granddaughter's safety. She too knew what her own son was capable of, and she did not want Jesse to get hurt by him. I walked back into the room Sandra was in, and she was now crying and begging him to bring Jesse back home. Yet, he still refused to do so, and I nudged her on the arm and held up a piece of paper that I written his address on. Sandra stopped crying and told him that it was fine if she stayed with him for a few days, and then she hung up. We hurried up and got into the car and headed to his house. And Sandra called the police while we were on our way. Sandra told them that her daughter had been taken by her ex-husband, and that he's very, very dangerous and was not supposed to be in contact with Jesse because of the abuse he had caused to Sandra. The dispatchers told Sandra that an officer was en route, and we were very nervous about going there, but we could not just sit around and do nothing. What ended up happening was more than I could ever really handle, but I'm glad I was there when we found Jesse. Update number three. Last week, when we had to go to Jesse's father's house to get her, it was a terrifying experience indeed. What I did not know is that Sandra had an order of protection against her ex-husband, and she had one for Jesse too. So he was violating that order by being around Jesse. That was our ticket to getting her back from him, and we just had to go there before he took off with her. It's hard telling where he would take off with her to if he knew we knew where he was. Since the police were on their way there, we parked down the block from his house. I was ready for whatever happened at that moment. I just did not know I would end up reacting the way I did, but I'm sure glad I was there to be a real dad to Jessie. After all, that's all she really needed and wanted. I told Sandra that we should wait for them to get there, but Sandra told me there's no way she would just sit around and wait, so we get out of the car and walk up to the house, but before we go inside, an officer pulled up. It was a good thing he did not have his sirens or lights on because he definitely would have made a run for it. So the officer could sneak up to the house and he kicked in the door, which took Jesse and her dad by a lot surprise. Whenever he realized the cop was coming into the house, he ran for the back door. But the police officer pulled out his taser and tased him before he could make it. He hit the ground and convulsed pretty hard. Sandra and I both ran inside and grabbed Jesse and ran back outside away from the home. Sandra was hugging Jesse and Jesse was crying and hugging her mom back. She looked absolutely terrified by the whole situation, but that's when I noticed a black mark under Jesse's eye. I grabbed her, I looked at her, and I asked her, what happened? She told me that he had slapped her in the face and that's when I took off back inside and I tackled her father who was standing up and handcuffed, and let me tell you, I hit him as hard as I could, and then another police officer pulled me off of him. From that day forward, Jesse never complained about me being around. We actually became pretty close after everything was said and done, and ever since Jesse's father was arrested for child abuse and violating his order of protection, things have been pretty quiet around our house. 
update number four. This is the final update. Hey guys, do you remember how I said things were pretty quiet around our house after Jesse's father was arrested? Well, that all soon changed about three days later when Jesse's grandmother and his mother stopped by the house unannounced. She said that she was there to give Jesse an early birthday present, which seemed reasonable, since her birthday was just about a month away. And with that, we let her come inside and talk with Jesse. Jesse's grandmother gave Jesse a bunch of scrapbooking supplies, like colored pattern paper, thousands of different little stickers. What we did not know is that she had slipped in two letters from her dad from jail. Jesse never said a word about the letters. She just hid them in her room. But ever since I discovered everything I did in her room last time, I've just made it a habit to search her room thoroughly at least once a week. I mean, yeah, why not? And that's when I stumbled upon the two letters, which were of him trying to justify why he slapped Jesse. Apparently, the reason he slapped her was that she had dropped his prized possession, which was a glass jar that had gold coins in it. He even told her in the letter that if she had left the jar alone, he never would have slapped her in the face. I was absolutely furious, and whenever Jesse got home from school that day, I confronted her about the letters and asked her if she had written them back. Well, to my surprise, she said she did not, which was a relief, but then I noticed the look on Jesse's face, and I asked her if she's okay, and she said these words. Well... He showed me who he really is. I don't need to have to tell him why it was okay to hit me over a jar of old coins. You've been more of a father to me than he ever was. Thank you. And she gave me a side hug and ran upstairs. I was glad she thought of me as her father now. That's all I ever wanted to begin with. And now that she knows the truth about her dad, she'll probably stay as far away from him as possible. Well... I guess you could say we could hope for that anyways. Thank you for listening to my story. The saddest part of this story was all the abuse that everybody had to put up with on the hands of this crappy biological father. Well, at least he got what was coming for him at the end. Tased, punched, handcuffed, and sent to jail. Good. Guys, let me know your thoughts about this story. If you were in OP's position, how would you handle trying to get your stepdaughter on your side when you know the truth? And then you realize the folder you showed her of all the abuse, it still did not keep her away. Drop your comments down below. Let's talk about this one. Guys, if you're new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito. I drop stories every single day, so if you want more similar stories to this, am I the a-hole dramas, mother-in-law disputes, wedding dramas, bridezillas, you name it, we cover it. Smash that subscribe button, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Have an amazing day.